What are they doing? Advertising on TV that you hear every once in a while, it says, uh, uh, this ain't my first rodeo. And it goes on in and advertises. <laughs> well, let me hear, I'm here to tell you, uh, this is my first rodeo. And so I'm not sure just exactly how it's all going to go. But uh, we may have a little disturbance now and then. I can't get Cat to sit down and be still. So you may hear her rumbling around. But that's understandable. She may want to come over and join in. You never can tell. But anyway, we want to try to bring the Sunday School lesson to you today. At this time, uh, we're taking a lesson from the fifth chapter of Romans. And uh, there's a lot, of, a lot of things that's occurred in the book of Romans up until this point. <clears throat> uh, one of the things that we want to do, though, before we continue on any further, uh, we'd like to have a short prayer. I probably want to thank you, Lord, for the time that you've made it available here for us to be able to to present the Sunday School lesson. Lord, I pray it's in, it's in accordance with your will and you don't mind us doing it this way. And uh, we just want to let you know we thank you for technology being available like it is today. So when, when these circumstances where we can't meet together as a, as a Sunday School class, we can still be able maybe to, to have the uh, lessons presented. Thank you, Lord, for that opportunity. And be with those, Lord, that out there that's really having problems in our country during this time that we're going through this tragedy or this pandemic. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Well, let me say this. We're, we're, the main character course in this particular lesson is, is Paul himself. Uh, God in his providence knew exactly what he was doing all along. We didn't he didn't need any counsel from you and me, neither one. Uh, he had it all figured out before he started. The reason why he was doing all this was so he could uh, provide for the salvation of, of mankind. And he did that. He set, set things up for Jesus to do his part. He set things up for guys like Paul to do their part. And even all the rest of them, Abraham and David and, and uh, Isaiah and Jeremiah and, and Peter and all of us, and even me. How about that? Whether you like it or not, <laughs> he has a plan for me to do, do things too, and I, I try to do it the best I can. Um, what I want to say about Paul is that Paul was a, had a very uh, back, good background. He knew all about the Jews. The Pharisee of Pharisees, he says. And he uh, spent a lot of time with Jesus after he was saved there on the road to Damascus. Matter of fact, a couple of three years in Arabia, I'm sure he had some one-on-one -on -one conversations and he taught him all he needed to know about what he needed to say to the Gentiles. And he got a, he got a chance to do that when he re really wrote the book of Romans. He put it all together there. He outlined it all. And uh, he told us there at the, in the beginning and the first first chapter, where he says, I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ, for it's the salvation of mankind, and brought through Jesus Christ. And he's not ashamed of it, and he was tickled to death to be able to preach it any time he got a chance. Really happy about it, because it's the greatest thing that ever happened. The gospel of Jesus Christ is the best thing that ever happened. Gave, gave us all hope and peace in the long run. And then those first few chapters of Romans, he just laid, laid, laid it out right out there and let us all know how wicked we are and how evil. And, and uh, he wanted us to let us know that we, we, uh, we were doomed to eternity uh, to be separated from him if we didn't, if it's something wasn't done. And wasn't anything we could do. We didn't have no hope. And so he set aside Jesus Christ to take care of that for us. And he let us know how evil we were. He let the Gentiles know he turned them over to their reprobate minds, over to the devil. He, gave, he let the Jews know that they really weren't all that smart neither because they had, they had been given uh, first-hand knowledge with the Lord. He chose them as his chosen people, provided the law for them and all that kind of stuff, and, and they still didn't follow it. And then, so he's telling them that both of them, 
For all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. That's what he said right there in Romans 3, 23. So as we get to this lesson today, we find that we have come to the point that we're being, we are being justified. And we should be at peace with that justification. So as we look at, I'm using my Sunday school, Sunday school book here as we look through this, and I'm going to be, I'm going to be reading some out of it. And I uh, hope you don't mind that. Try to try to elaborate a little bit as we go along. Uh, Paul identified the main problem with this, with sin in, in chapter three, and then he went on in and uh, chapter four to reveal the, a little bit of the other side of the coin, how how they had lived out their lives. The Lord Moses revealed the sin to them, and. Uh, so he had one to shine a light in the darkness, and that light was his son, Jesus Christ. So faith has always been the standard for justification. You remember Abraham believed and was justified. David also had a role, his role in salvation. The entire sacrificial system pointed to the Lamb of God, Jesus Christ, as the final sacrifice. So it was this cause of salvation that we find here in Romans 5, that Paul turned his attention to the effects of justification. You know, there's a justification, sanctification, and glorification. And once we're justified, now we're in that point, right? We're living here on earth. And we're Christians, we're living through the sanctification period. And then when we pass on from this life into the life eternal, that's when we will have glorification. I take on that glorified body. And so he's going to let us know here in this lesson today how we can be at peace with God. And there's three, three different main things that we're going to talk about. We're going to be justified by benefits, justified through his death, and justified, justified equals reconciliation. So I want to start off by starting off with reading the first verses, the first five verses of chapter five. So therefore, since we have been declared righteous by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. We also obtain access through him by faith into his grace in which we stand. And we rejoice in the hope of the glory of God. And not only that, but we also rejoice in our afflictions because we know that affliction produces endurance. Endurance produces proven character. Proven character produces hope. This hope will not disappoint us because God's love has been poured out in our hearts through the Holy Spirit who was given to us. You always sort of think about when you read Scripture and you come across a word like, therefore, what's it there for? Well, immediately you got to think about what have I got to remember? I've got to remember what's done happened back there in chapters one through four, because otherwise I might well not go on no further from here. So I just tried to review that a little bit for you a while ago, and so I'm going to continue on from here, recognizing that there's some things we know. We know we're sinful. We know we, did, we don't have no hope. We know we need a Savior, and that's what he's going to provide for us. So therefore, it makes the transition here for us in chapter 5, where he shifts also from talking about you and they and that kind of stuff, and he begins to talk more about we, us, him and us, as we go along from here on. See that quite a bit. And the first benefit that he talks about here is peace. And what does peace mean? Well, you know, you don't have peace. As long as you're in war against something, you don't got no peace. And we have, until Jesus Christ come along, we've been at war with God, fighting against him, against this business of sin. We, won't, we don't like the idea of him telling us what to do. We want to do it the way we want to do it. And we find ourselves in trouble. The only way we're going to have peace is through the Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. <clears throat> so we're in conflict, and, and once we get this justification started, that's when peace takes over. We have access to God. Instead of being in a state of hostility, 
And Paul reminded the Romans that this was all the result of God's grace in their life, what it's going to take. There's no standing on their own, our own. And we stand in no unmerited favor. God poured out his grace upon us. Give the individual the confidence in the hope of the glory of God. We have fallen short, as I said earlier, where he said, for all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. So justification will not remove affliction from our lives. We're going to suffer the consequences of the sins we've already committed. But yet, we're going to establish a new relationship with God. And it's going to help us get over these challenges. We're going to be able to rejoice in the afflictions that we have. And as a result of that, as we go along, we're going to be able to endure. We'll have endurance. And once we gain endurance, then that's going to produce the character that we need. And then as we develop the character that we need, we're going to find that that's going to bring us around full circle to where we will have a hope in Christ. Yes, the world is filled with many disappointments. We have disappointment that's marred our character and produces despair. But the hope of God produces in our lives through these afflictions, endurance, and character. And so we then take note that all of this is rooted in God's love. When we come to Him in faith, we move from being object of anger and wrath to being recipients of His love. Paul wrote in that God pours out his love on us, completely covering us, and our afflictions lead to hope, which gives us a keener sense of his love for us. God's love is poured out on us through the work of the Holy Spirit. In all circumstances, the Spirit will guide and direct us in the right way, helping us to endure times and growing stronger in our faith. So that takes care of that first little section. We'll move on to the next one called Justified Through His Death. Romans 5, 6 through 8. For while we still are helpless, at the right time, Christ died for the ungodly. For rarely will someone die for a just person. Though for a good person, perhaps someone might even die, dare to die. But God proves his own love for us in that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. You know, like I mentioned earlier, we we're in a perpetual state of war with God. And we're being justified now through Jesus. We were helpless before. And that's been changed. We're, be, we're now to achieve a right relationship with God. And I, God, in, in his uh, response to the helplessness that we had, he sent Jesus Christ to die in our place. He poured out his love. That tangible proof of his lavish gift was the sacrifice of Jesus. Then we required a penalty, and that penalty was death. So without this divine intervention, we would be faced to pay for this ourselves. And so both of these things are, would mean that we would spend eternity in hell. And as he did with Abraham and others, that substitute came at the right time. As you know there, at the time when Mary and Jesus was born there in the manger. That was the beginning of the time that, that Jesus came into the world to live that life, that perfect life, to die on the cross for us. He did, want, he did what no one else ever predicted. He, his sacrifice was something that was sort of strange. That, how was that going to work? Well, some, somebody had to take place of the rebellion that you and I were making against God. That's sort of unheard of logic, but God's radical commitment to our salvation can be traced in one motivation, and that was his love for us. That's what did it. He demonstrated that when Jesus died on the cross. You got to get it right before God would accept it. Some people think that. Well, that's not true. Paul was making it clear. We don't have to become good enough. We can't become good enough. Instead, God takes the first step. And then the war with him is over. 
even though we were still sinners, living under his wrath, Christ died for us. The benefit of justification is great, but the cost was even greater. We must never forget that sacrifice. If we ever wonder about God's love for us, the cross should be all the proof we need. Now we move on to justify, justification equals reconciliation. Verses 9 through 11. How much more then, since we have now been declared righteous by his blood, will we, will we, will we be saved through him from wrath? For if while we were enemies, we were reconciled to God through the death of his son. Now how much more, having been reconciled, we will be saved by his life. And not only that, but we will rejoice also in God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we have now received this reconciliation. You know, because we have been justified by God through faith, we can now surely know that we're going to avoid that wrath. Through the death of Jesus Christ on the cross, we've been saved from our sins. We don't have to pay that penalty ourselves. We've been released from that condemnation. And believers will never suffer the wrath of God because Jesus suffered it in our place there on the cross. So the term reconciled indicates something that's broken. You know, you uh, make sure that you got your bank account reconciled. You know, you, get, you got some money left after you check and make sure you done paid all your bills. Reconcile. Relationship, like marriage relationships, sometimes you can reconcile them, get things fixed up, where now you're back on, all, back on the same page. We, do, we must accept God's offer by faith. If we refuse, we'll still remain hostile to God. So Paul reminded those Romans that Jesus' death on the cross was part was was the only part of the story. Jesus rose from the dead also, because he's alive. Our lives will be different. Salvation from now and later aspects will reach to eternity. We're saved from the consequences of our sins by his death. We're saved to walk in holiness through power working in us, the Holy Spirit living in our lives. God's work on our behalf through the death and resurrection of Christ takes over. He has done so much and provided so much. Never, we can never repay His grace and love that He has for us. We can only live differently. And that's what He wants. He wants us to live in the right relationship with Him on a day-to-day -day basis, making Him the most important part of our lives and never, never giving up anything else. Salvation does not make us perfect, but it does make us have a relationship with God because he, we have accepted what he did for us. We missed the mark, but he helps us make the mark. And this helps us change our standing with him as we recognize that Christ continues to be our substitute and we are still righteous in his eyes because of Jesus. Jesus is never going to quit. He's there sitting at the right hand of God right now, interceding for each one of us so that we might be able to talk to him and ask him every day to help us with our situations. And we rejoice in it. Be happy with it. Be as happy now as we're going to be when we get to heaven. We've got to be, try to reach that point. Get that point to where we're holy as he's holy. You ever thought about that? Yes. He says that he, he has taken unholiness out of our lives so that we can be holy. He's taken unrighteousness from our lives and gave us righteousness. Hey, you can't ask for much more than that. We demonstrate the genuine love, our genuine joy to God as we live our daily lives and he expects us, I think, in a way, to really show him that kind of respect and honor. Joy makes our witness to the world much more effective. I end this little discussion and lesson today pointing out that there's about three things that we really try to gain from this lesson today. 
that peace with God results from being declared just through faith in Jesus. And then God demonstrates his love for us by the sacrificial death of Jesus Christ on the cross. Believers then are saved through faith in Jesus now and forever. So you see, ain't nothing we've done. God did it all, and we need to glorify, give him all the glory. And I end this lesson. Thank you, Lord, for doing what you did for us. And I appreciate the opportunity of teaching the lesson today. Amen.